Good morning, everybody. I'm Daryl Steinberg, President Pro Tem of the California State Senate. I'm very uh, glad to be joined here by a number of my colleagues who have worked hard over the last uh, several weeks to put together this package. You're going to be hearing from the next leader of the Senate, Senator De Leon, um, and you're going to hear from Senator Lara, the chair of the working group. But I want to acknowledge and thank uh, the other members of the working group who are standing uh, behind me as well, the majority leader, Senator Ellen Corbett, the chair of our Ethics Committee, Senator Richard Roth, Senator Jerry Hill, uh, and Senator Bill Monning. Thank you for your hours of work in helping to put together this package. Um, members of the press and, and public, this week uh, I have declared on behalf of my colleagues, we move forward. And without missing a beat, we're here today to unveil the California Accountability in Public Service Act. I am very proud of the Senate and what we have all done to help turn the state from deficits and recession to surplus and recovery. But the good legislative work we produce is only as strong as the public's perception and trust in their legislature. Year after year, the media and constituents raise legitimate concerns about the legal practices currently permitted under state law. That is why I asked Senator Lara and others to look at changes that should be made and to tackle these difficult subjects head on. As part of that effort, we have been working closely with the Fair Political Practices Commission to identify and address what we agree are some of the most critical issues. Let me be clear, the allegations against two members of the legislature relate to breaking the rules. We have a judicial system that deals with those rare and isolated cases. The CAPS Act that we unveiled today concerns restricting practices that are currently legal under California law and represents the initial fruit of labor by our Senate working group. Changes should be made to the rules and regulations governing legal gifts and gift limits to shareholders, lobbyist fundraisers, and campaign finance disclosure. These proposals we present today represent proactive, significant upgrades to the 40-year-old Political Reform Act. Today, the Senate proposes the most substantive strengthening of the Act in decades. I want to thank Senator Lara for chairing this important effort for his leadership, and I want to invite him up to the podium now to give you details of what is in the package. Senator Lara. Thank you, Senator Steinberg, and thank you to the members of the working group for joining us today on this milestone announcement. As public servants, we have the responsibility to uphold the integrity of the offices we serve in uh, and to represent the interest of our constituents uh, in a transparent and accountable manner. Uh, if we are to move forward as a state and to effectively conduct the business of the people of California, we need to build on a foundation of trust between the elected officials and the people we represent. There's no question that recent events are testing the public's faith on how our government does its work. In response to the, those recent events, Senator Steinberg has asked a few colleagues to get together informally and examine the legislative and campa campaign finance best practices with the intent to discuss and prepare a package of reforms that strengthen our laws in California. It has been my honor to chair this working group, and I'm joined today by the members who comprise it. Today, based on the findings and recommendations of this working group, we are proud to announce the California Accountability and Public Service Act, otherwise known as CAPS Act. The CAPS Act is a package of three bills aimed at increasing accountability and transparency in the rules and political practices. It is also important to note that we are presenting this package in consultation with the California Fair Political Practice Committee. I'd like to take a moment to discuss the three bills in the CAPS Act in detail. First, first bill is SB 1441, bill would establish a ban on all fundraisers from taking place in a lobbyist home. We may consider banning fundraisers at a lobbyist office at a later date. The second bill, SB 1442, would replace the semi-annual reporting statements with quarterly filing reports. 
um, essentially providing doubling the amount of disclosure currently provided to the public. This would also streamline and consolidate the current reporting process without losing transparency. Finally, the third bill, SB 1443, will ban all gifts from lobbyists and specifically ban, if you see on this chart here, uh, the chart specifically bans gifts uh, to spas, golf, theme parks, recreational trips, concerts, professional entertainment, professional sporting events, cash and gift cards from all sources. This bill will also establish a cap of $200 for the amount of permitted annual gifts from any source and give FPPC the authority to review and if necessary, increase the limits at their discretion in odd numbered years. If you look at the chart uh, to my right, uh, in the near future, the gift limit would have met and exceeded the $500 conflict of interest threshold. This, it, that is nearly double the limit that was created in 1974. SB 1443 would cut the allowable gifts by more than half. Uh, to, to, cap, to recap the three bills, the CAPS Act would ban all gifts from lobbyists, ban specific gifts from any source, ban fundraisers from lobbyist homes, establish a quarterly disclosure period instead of the semi-annual current reporting requirement, and lowers the allowable gift limit to $200. These bills represent a new day in accountability for our state government and elected officials, and it is one of the most significant proposals to change political practices in California in the last 20 years. And we are continuing our dialogue the working group will continue to discuss other measures moving forward. For example, one of our members, Senator Jerry Hill, uh, has introduced SB 831, which among other things is looking at the issues of travel. The hard work of the legislature is too important to be sidetracked by issues of accountability of a few. We need to restore the public trust and the CAPS Act will ensure that California has the accountability from its public servants and puts us back on track. Thank you. Now, uh, pass the mic to Senator Kevin DeLeon. Thank you very much, uh, Senator Ricardo Lara. I want to also recognize a member who just came in today, that is Senator Norma Torres. Uh, welcome, and I want to uh, thank Senator uh, Steinberg, our pro tem of the Senate, uh, for his uh, uh, leadership in convening uh, this working group, and I want to give a very special thank you to Senator Ricardo Lara, as well as his staff, and to the great members of this uh, task force, this work group, for their very hard work, for their very long hours uh, 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 invested in putting uh, together a very comprehensive uh, reform package. Uh, quite simply put, I'm very proud of the working group, what the working group has accomplished. On the issues of gifts, the, these proposed changes are way long overdue. Over time, the gift limit has risen to $440. As we all know, it's heading towards $500, the conflict of interest threshold. SB 1443, a measure which I will be uh, authoring along with my joint authors are here today, will roll this back significantly to $200. This bill, as was articulated by Senator Ricardo Lara, uh, to my left on the chart, will also ban all gifts, all gifts, let me underscore, emphasize, and highlight, all gifts will be banned from lobbyists and will zero out indefensible gifts such as tickets to professional sporting events, concerts, amusement parks, golf, spa, and other recreational trips. This is, and let me underscore and highlight, and I think it's been validated uh, by the FPPC Chief Enforcement Officer Gary Winnick. This is the most comprehensive reform package to the Political Reform Act in a generation. I hope that this entire legislative package will help restore the public's confidence in its elected officials, and it's time to get to work. Thank you. Thank you, Senator DeLeon. Uh, we'd be happy, any of us, any member of the working group here, to stand for your questions. Sure. Can I ask you a question on the banning the gifts here? You had a proposal to do that in 2012 from a now former Republican state senator, and it was shelved. What changed? Well. Uh, first of all, this is not an absolute ban. Uh, it is a ban on certain categories, of course, um, but it is a reduction from 440 to 200. Um, wh what has changed? The, obviously, uh, we, we've been dealing with uh, a lot of questions here. And rather than shy away from it or be defensive, uh, we have felt and feel 
that it is important that we take advantage of this moment and that we, you know, as, as, as I like to say, that we lean into it, we look at these practices, and that we make the changes that will help uh, going forward. Now is the time. And why some gifts and not others, if I may ask? Well, let Senator Lara take that, but these sure. are, th these, you have to draw lines. Whenever, whenever you make law, you draw, you draw lines. I think these are rational lines. Um, and uh, I think they're, they're the things that you point out, that others point out uh, when. In, in, in considering what we were banning, we looked at those gifts that were much more difficult to prove that there was some sort of legislative intent. And this list was uh, developed uh, in that rationale. And so therefore, we feel that these are uh, appropriate gifts uh, that should be banned given that they're less defensible in terms of a legislative intent. And we work really hard with the FPPC to determine what those uh, bans would be in those specific uh, instances. So you believe, if I could follow, I'm sorry, like dinners and things are, there could be a legislative intent? Uh, our legislative work. Yep. Yes. That's, that's yes. Yes. Okay. yes. Could you explain that a little bit more, like what would be an example of something that would be appropriate versus something that would be inappropriate? I mean, how did you, just to elaborate a little more on coming up with this. Well, there are a whole host of events, for example, that uh, legislators are invited to, and in fact, part of our responsibility as uh, community leaders to attend, whether it's a, a dinner for a nonprofit, for example, uh, that isn't a fundraiser. Uh, under the Act, uh, those are reportable and those are considered gifts. And so uh, we want to make sure that members can continue to do their jobs. Um, it's like the behest rule in a way, if I may make an analogy. On the one hand, it's important that, uh, that, that we disclose those behests when we raise money for nonprofits and charities, but you, you can go so far because you don't want to chill the ability and the opportunity for uh, community leaders to help struggling nonprofits who, who can use the help. And it, 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 the, the distinction here, I think, is similar. Senator, <coughs> Senator and Steinberg. Still, and it's still reportable. We report the gifts. We're not taking away or reducing the reporting in any way. Senator Let me add something. I'm not going to add something that's dramatically different, maybe just a different spin. As we all know that every day, members, whether you're Democrat, whether you're Republican, whether you're Senator or you're a member of the Assembly, part of your responsibilities, part of your duties are to go to the YMCA, local boys club, you know, girls club, to perform in the Chamber of Commerce. The reality is, under the FPPC rules, these are considered gifts and are reportable. So with that being said, now, subjectively speaking, a rubber chicken to me is not a gift. <laughs> <laughs> but nonetheless, under today's rules, you know, it's reportable. So we don't live in a world of absolutes. Perhaps in a world of absolutes, in a world of purity, you know, with the visceral emotional reaction sometimes that the electorate, you know, uh, has, is, is we have to deal with the real life consequences that members go through every single day. They go back home and participate in daily activities as the role, functioning role as a state senator. So when we look at these uh, 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 gifts right here, as Senator Ricardo Lara just articulated very well, we rolled up our sleeves with the FPPC and collectively we identified the most egregious, indefensible you know, gifts that have been provided, even though they're reportable, to members of the California State Legislature. We believe that this will stand muster, that we believe that the electorate throughout the state of California will agree with us wholeheartedly. The reality is under the gift limits and under the way the criteria is defined, if you go and have a chicken rubber dinner, that is a gift. And while as we know, no one wants to pay out of their own personal pocket part of the work performance that they have to perform day in and day out. So, so given that, um, do you think that you get support from you know, someone might not like me going to play golf with someone, but it's part of my job and it's how I get to know these people and it's great legislation. Just, 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 I guess I'm asking, do you think you're going to have the support among your other lawmakers to get these bills through? Yes. I think uh, this is good. This is, uh, this is a look inside, right? It's looking inside and saying uh, we're proud of the work that we do. Uh, we can point to many great achievements none more important than what we've all done collectively with our colleagues on the other side of the aisle and the governor to help turn this state around. 
but perception matters. And, you know, these will go through the appropriate process, and, you know, I'm confident that we will have a very strong package at the end. Um, Senator Steinberg. Talk about the legislative in purpose for trips to, say, Scandinavia, Poland, other countries far away from California that are paid for by, um, by outside groups. Maybe Senator Laura could address that question. Sure. We... Um, as I, as I stated earlier, we do have uh, Senator Jerry Hill who's uh, working on that issue, and the, the work of the working group is going to continue to review this, uh, these uh, trips that are quite, quite frankly, very edu edu educational gifts that as we are going to, as we conduct business as the eighth largest economy in the world, we have to see what other countries are doing, especially in the issues of energy and in, uh, environmental um, innovation, which is, you know, makes us the leader in the world. And so, uh, but then again, we understand that this is uh, another issue of, uh, for us to look at, and we're going to continue as a working group to, to work on, on this issue and others. How about Maui? How about Maui? That's not another country. We're looking at those issues. Okay. The, the, the pro tem said perception matters. That's why well, I asked sure the question. I simply, yeah. I simply just raise it for that reason. Sure, it does. But let me put this in, in its proper context and get down to the essence of, of, of the question itself, because I think that Senator Lara um, answered it uh, 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 quite well. This is the reality. There was a time and place in the California State Legislature where the taxpayers underwrote these trips, educational trips. And they were justified because there was a goal, there was an objective that you could quantify and you could measure. Now, there was an outcry because taxpayers didn't want to underwrite these types of trips, something that happens every single day on a monthly basis, on an annual basis in Congress, where there's no questions that are asked. Now, we've taken, the tax, we've taken the taxpayers out of this equation, and we've gone to nonprofit agencies who were underwritten these trips. Just recently, Senator Ricardo Lara and myself, we went to Mexico City to meet with the Secretary of the Environment as well as the Secretary of Foreign Affairs, as well as the U.S. Ambassador dealing with drug trade, cartel, high part assault weapons trafficking from California to Mexico, as dealing with the issues of climate change and potential carpet offset market with California and our next door neighbor. Now, I don't know, I know Ricardo Lara's life story. I don't believe he has the financial wherewithal out of his own personal pocket to underwrite a trip of such magnitude where he can come back or others can come back and quantify and say, this is what we've learned, this is what needs to happen, this is what we may move forward towards policy that benefits California. You don't have those opportunities if you just stay anchored in your own district. This is the ninth largest economy in the entire world. This is a $2 trillion economy. We, are, we just witnessed the Sochi Olympics in Russia. Our economy in California is larger than that of all of Russia. You simply can't just be rooted and anchored in your district. You have to have an opportunity to explore. And if it's not done on a taxpayer dollars, and if you can justify, you can measure, and you can quantify real tangible results, I think that's very legitimate. That's very, very legitimate. If you have individuals who game the system, you, you just, uh, John just mentioned and underscored the trip to, uh, the annual trip to, to Maui. I won't speak to that. I haven't been on those trips. A lot of folks up here haven't been on those trips either. But Elected officials are going to have to justify, obviously, you know, they're traveling. But if it's by far and large, I believe it's always by far and large justified. And if it's good for California, that means it's good for policy. Senator, <laughs> Senator Steinberg. I can tell you is why I want to just add, because I think this is an important question. I, I know this last year I traveled uh, to Switzerland, talked a lot about it uh, proudly, um, to look at the European system of apprenticeship and linked learning, high, high school education. <coughs> and that trip and what I saw in one week in Switzerland inspires my work back here. We have $250 million in, a, in the budget Career Ed Trust Fund. I want to get more next year. And that experience and what I learned there uh, informs my work in a very real way. So I think you have to look at these on, on, on their merits here. And, um, and we are a nation state. And I think you want to encourage members to see other practices uh, in other countries that can benefit California. Ben Senator Benjamin Netanyahu yesterday coming to, yes. Do you feel like there are instances where maybe, the, maybe the state should pay for the travel? Are there, have you well, I think that's what Senator DeLeon was trying to say. I mean, um, I would guarantee you if we proposed such a policy or implemented such a policy that 
that uh, would be on every one of your front pages. And uh, we would be heavily, heavily criticized uh, for doing that. And so, no, uh, the public, I don't think, would like that. Um, e even if we had, even if I think we could legitimately justify it, I don't think the public would like it. Senator, a two-part question for you. First, is this package of ethics package inspired in part by what's uh, transpired with the two senators who are currently on leave of absence? And secondly, uh, can you give us an update on what happened yesterday in the Senate Rules Committee with regard to the expulsion motion of those two members? Well, uh, first of all, as I said earlier, the allegations against the two members relate to breaking the rules. They relate to criminal violations. These, this package does not. This package deals with practices that are, are legal. And so uh, it's different. Now, is the time right to bring this forward because of what we uh, have experienced and, and what has been in the news lately? Yes. But this is different. Uh, in terms of yesterday, there was no motion uh, brought before the Senate Rules Committee. And as I said on the floor today, um, we la have laid out a very clear uh, plan. I know people may disagree with it. I know uh, Senator Wright, uh, again, in Colorado are not coming back unless uh, they are, are cleared. And we intend to move forward. And folks want to play their politics or do whatever they're going to do, do it outside the building here. But we're done. Phrases, the irony that several of you were bit players, again, to whatever phrase you want to use, in the Calderon investigation, uh, that yet you're leading the charge on the reforms as far as the. Oh, please. I mean, you know, it, that, that, is, that, that is ridiculous. Thank you. Uh, the charges have uh, been made, the indictment has been rendered, Senator Calderon's going to have his day in court, all that business. Uh, you know, uh, was was disproven. I mean, it's just not it's just not factual. And so, uh, look at. I'm here for another. I'm here for another nine months. Senator De Leon is going to take over and do a great job. And um, our job is always to put this institution first. Always to look at what public policies we can move forward that will help improve public confidence. Um, we are tempered by our own experiences and, and, you know, what we have been dealing with these last number of months. And you know what? In terms of the Republicans, I invite them to join us. Join us. Co-sponsor this, this package. Co-sponsor all of it. And we'll work together and improve, the, uh, and improve public confidence. Let, 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 let me, let, I just going to wait. I got to leave. I have to catch a flight. I don't know if my colleagues do, but let me just make one statement with regards to Don, what you just said. Those types of comments, whether they're attributed to an individual or individuals or not, or background or deep background, lead to the justified cynicism that the electorate has. The political gainsmanship, the political immaturity, the subterfuge. At the end of the day, we're elected officials to focus on one thing, improving the human condition, moving forward public policy that helps everyday Californians. And these types of comments, again, is, is just a reflection of whoever you can attribute them to, whether their background or they're upfront and direct about it. It just leads to the cynicism and the political immaturity that quite unfortunately, you know, does exist under this Capitol Dome, period. I'm sorry? Uh, I know Senator Lara briefed uh, the Republican leadership, and, and uh, so, you know, we, we go about making sure that uh, we, we communicate, and I've certainly communicated with Senator Huff on all aspects of what's gone on over the last months here. Any other questions? Senator DeLeon, I know you have to leave. Can you give Senator. us a real quick statement in Spanish, please, in regards to caps? Can we just do it right up the side, because i got to catch. i got to right, show me okay. where your camera is, and I'll go real quick. You Mr. Lara, how about yourself, Mr. Lara? The importance of perception. And would you say that uh, average citizens in California have the perception that no one else was involved in either of these cases of corruption? Uh, yes. This involves the corruption issues involve one member. That's what the indictment says, and that's the end of the story. I mean, you know, uh, 
On behalf of all of us up here, I mean, I, I've had a very proud and honorable career, continue to, 14th year, and uh, I've done it honestly, con will continue to, and the same is true of my, my colleagues up here. So, you know, you're, you're welcome to ask any question you like, and we'll do our best to answer them, okay? That's it. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Yeah, yeah.